Hey, I'm Rob Gant with the Goose Creek Gazette and the Berkeley Independent. I'm here today in the Somerville Journal Scene office with my teammate Roger Lee of the Somerville Journal Scene. And Roger, it's uh, it's reached a very important time of the season. First week of the playoffs are in the books. Second week of the playoffs are coming up. Uh, before we talk about those games, though, let's um, mention our players of the week. Who, who are your two guys? Uh, Brody Hopkins, receiver for Somerville, had 116 yards and a touchdown receiving. Also, uh, Factored into the game in other ways, had a, had a fake punt for a first down, a lot of return yards. And then for Fort Dorchester, linebacker Justin McElveen had uh, 17 tackles, two sacks, and I think a total of uh, like seven stops in the backfield. So a tremendous game for that guy. All right. Uh, on my side of things in Berkeley County, uh, it was Corey Moreau, a uh, receiver defensive back for St. John's Christian. He had two touchdown catches, and he returned two interceptions for touchdowns in a 44 uh, 32 win. Um, the uh, another guy is uh, Emmanuel Mukwamu, the quarterback at Goose Creek. He accounted for seven total touchdowns. Hurricane Manny went off on uh, West Florence. He um, threw two touchdowns. Actually, threw four overall. He threw two to Damon Muzan, uh, one each to a couple other guys. Uh, good performance by him. And the other guy, Player of the Week option for from Berkeley County is uh, Dorian Pinkney, a running back for, running back for Cross. He went over 180 yards. Uh, he had four touchdowns. One of those was an 80-yard touchdown romp um, in Cross's win over Military Magnet. Um, you can vote on journalscene.com. Click on the little navigation menu, thingamabob, whatchamacallit, drag down to Player of the Week. Uh, it would be for Week 11, I think. Um, click on the one you want to win. And if you haven't registered, you'll have to do that. But uh, once you do, uh, you'll be entered to win a tailgate package. Uh, five good options to choose for this week's player of the week. Uh, Berkeley counties are clearly better than what happened on the other side. <laughs> so go Berkeley County. So you're so not impressed by 17 tackles at all? Not real. I mean, I no. Okay. No, all right. no not at all. Not, actually, I, I know McElveen's parents, and they're really good people. So uh, if you're going to vote for somebody over there, vote for him. Although Brody Hopkins is Brody really Hopkins good. Brody Hopkins is having a good year. He's pretty good, man. That's a, that guy can play. Uh, all right. Well, uh, well, I guess we'll start out on my side of things. Normally, we kind of throw it over to you, and you uh, wax poetic about Dorchester County. But we're going to start out on my side of things. Uh Last week, uh, as, as we mentioned earlier, Cross uh, hosted Military Magnet in a football game, uh, first round playoff game in Class A, and uh, Cross rolled 36 to nothing. What's special about that was they recorded back-to-back -back shutouts, the Trojans did, for the first time since when? Do you know? 2012. Wrong! 2013, the Cross Trojans uh, went back-to-back -back, uh, with great defensive, effort, defensive efforts. Um, they hit the road this week to Baptist Hill. Revenge is a bit of a factor. They played earlier this season, and uh, Baptist Hill ended up winning 22-14. to That game was in Cross. Uh, this one will be in Hollywood on Friday. Uh, really, the key here for Cross is um, kind of soak up that, that, that vengeance that you want to dish out and play hyper-focused on you know every play. Make sure you take care of the ball. Make sure you make all the tackles when you get an opportunity. I think this is definitely a chance for Cross to win a second playoff game, which would be huge considering they didn't win any games last year. If they win, I uh, think they'll travel to Lakeview. I think Lake, Lakeview has to beat somebody, but I think Lakeview is the better of the next uh, two opponents. Um, all right, yeah, and uh, Timberland uh, knocked off Latta 41-8 to in the first round of the 2A playoffs. Not really a shock there. Uh, that's kind of what Timberland does every year. Um, they always make a deep run in the playoffs, and they st they started off these playoffs with an easy win against Latta. Uh, four, um, three guys scored two touchdowns apiece for the Wolves, and that one was Matthew Williamson. He's a linebacker, running back. The quarterback is James Austin. Uh, he scored twice, and a guy who went for over, I believe, I'm pretty sure it was over 140 yards rushing with a really long touchdown to his credit was a guy named uh, Jamari Nelson. So those three guys scored twice for the Wolves defensively. A young man named Amari Jenkins, he had 16 tackles, almost like a McElveen oh, effort okay. there earlier. Yeah. Had a nice effort. Matthew Williamson, he's always around the ball too. He had double digits and tackles, and I know they had a couple other guys around 10. Typical Timberland effort. Uh, this week, they are the Wolves are hosting Bamberg Earhart. Um, Bamberg Earhart is coming off of 
a miraculous win, we'll say. Um, they knocked off Mullins last week. I don't know if you ever saw if you, if you did, did you see the play? Did you see how they won? It was nah, on Twitter? No. Nah. Did you even use Twitter? Every once in a while. Well, anyway. Uh, Bamberg Erhar is coming off a win over Mullins on the last play of the game. It was a double pass. They threw it out to the right. The quarterback, or a guy was left-handed, I think. He throws it back across the field to a receiver who's wide open. Mullins just fell asleep and left him open. He run, this, this guy who catches it runs down the field about, I don't know, five, ten yards. He turns around, and he, hit, he throws it back across the middle of the field to a guy that's just streaking down the middle of the field for Bamberg. Uh, two Mullins defenders hit each other. One flips up in the air, and the kid get, breaks to daylight and scores a touchdown on the final play of the game to put Bamberg uh, over the top against Mullins, and it made Sports Center. Well, I'll be on Twitter looking at it later well, you, today. You need, you, need, you, need to, you need to see the play. It's uh, interesting. I, I, don't, I don't know if we need to call that the – I don't know. Would you call it the miracle in Mullins or the meltdown in Mullins? I guess it depends on Either what Either one probably fits. Yeah. Uh, yeah, check that out on Twitter. If you haven't seen it, Bamberg Earhart scores last play of the game, pass out to the right, throws it back across the field, then another pass over the middle, a, a mean collision between two Mullins players, and Bamberg Earhart celebrates in the end zone. They got to roll into St. Stephen off an emotional victory like that. Um, they would have been behind the eight ball anyway. I think Timberland, Timberland is the better of these two teams here. Um, and really all Timberland has to do is it could be, could be brutal cold on Friday night, but if they take care of the ball and just, just be Timberland, um, I think they're going to win the football game and they're going to advance to the third round of the playoffs, which would be a road trip to Barnwell, um, who put them out of the playoffs last year. So... There's some revenge, revenge brewing, uh, brewing for the Wolves. It's cold. I can't get the words out. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, one other game I want to mention. And I went to this game, and St. John's Christian took out Clarendon Hall 44-32. to It was a back-and-forth uh, knockdown, drag-out. Uh, the, the key here, uh, really the big thing here for St. John's Christian was um, they hadn't won a playoff game in a few years. Um, they got out there and they played pretty well. Corey Moreau, as, as I mentioned earlier, he had the four touchdowns, and um, they are—they feel like they're playing pretty well, and they're heading to Richard Win on Friday for the Skiza eight-man semifinals. If they win that game, they advance to the championship. I'm assuming that will be Andrew Jackson. They play. I mean, Andrew Jackson has to beat Palmetto Christian, but I mean, Andrew Jackson is the Alabama of Skiza, or is it the LSU? I, don't I, think, know. I think you'd have to go with the LSU. I this think year. I, I think Andrew Jackson is the LSU of Skeezer. So uh, Andrew Jackson probably awaits in the championship game on November twenty second. Um, that's at a neutral location. the uh, The deal here, the deal here for St. John's Christian is Richard Wynn is the team that will try to grind you down, kind of like the old Goose Creek Gator football teams. Old school football, just downhill, 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 try to lean on you and wear you out physically over the course of the game. So that's what St. John's Christian is up against here. I mean, if they take care of the football and don't help them out, um, you know, St. John's Christian will definitely have a chance to win this football game. Richard Wynn is very good. Both teams are – actually, St. John's Christian is 9-1. and one. Richard Wynn is 8-1. and one. So it's going to be a collision of two uh, colossal eight-man opponents um, – Look for that one to be a close one and an exciting one. Well, I have two, two other things to mention. Cane Bay made the playoffs last week. They were eliminated by Carolina Forest, 42-7. to one, of my, one other team of my Northwood Academy uh, went up to Trinity Burns and uh, didn't fare very well either. So their season is over. Now we're to the – probably these are the co-games of the week for us. Um, Berkeley loads up the buses, goes to Fort Dorchester, Goose Creek, Welcome Somerville into the swamp. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you now to let us know what you think and then come back to me and we'll finish up. All right, all right. Well, you know, uh, both both uh, the teams in Dorchester County, they're still alive in the playoffs, are, are kind of uh, hitting a little groove, so that's good. Somerville uh, had a 14-10 win over Lug- Lugolf Elgin. Am I pronouncing that that's right, correct. Rob? That is correct. All right. Uh, you know, I think Lugolf played them better than some people thought they would. It was a great defensive game. Uh, Somerville blew a couple of opportunities, fumbled the ball, trying to get into the end zone, and, and Lugoff recovered. Uh, um, but, you know, Somerville uh, endeared 
uh, came out with a, a, a game-winning drive in the final minutes. With only 21 seconds left, they scored a touchdown. It was nice. Antonio Robertson's a senior running back who has, uh, you know, has it, uh, for various reasons, hasn't got as much playing time as guys like K.J. Rollins and all this year. Uh, and, um, and the other running back that's so good for, for Somerville. Uh, but they went to him heavy on that drive, and he scored the, the, the one-yard touchdown run. So that was like a nice moment for that guy. Definitely. You know, Colby Shirey and Brody Hopkins connected for like uh, 116 passing yards. We mentioned Brody earlier in the show. Uh, Roan Shaver and George, Jaden, sorry, Jaden James both had interceptions for the Green Wave. That was big in that in that game. Uh, Luke Taylor, linebacker, was all over the field, had at least two sacks. Don't have the defensive stats for that game, but uh, I know I saw him in the backfield a lot. So they go into Goose Creek. This week, that's the, the team they didn't play because of the hurricane. Uh, the Gators are also hitting their stride. I think, you know, people can look for a great game in Goose Creek this week. Uh, Somerville is basically just going to have to play one of its best games of the year. They're going to have to protect the football. They're going to have to, uh, you know, hit some, some big plays. And, and, you know, probably they probably will try to, to see how they can run against Goose Creek, I would think, uh, because they've had a strong rushing game this season that's worked all year. Uh, but, you know, what do you think about the, the Somerville-Goose Creek matchup? Well, the first thing I'll say is Goose Creek's coming off a 48-27 win over South Florence. Uh, Hurricane Manny had uh, <laughs> accounted for seven touchdowns. We mentioned that earlier. Uh, so I, I, I agree with you. that They're clicking on all cylinders heading into the game. Uh, what do I think about this game? Um, I mean, I know that the Gators are really excited about the opportunity to play them. Uh, but they were, I mean, you know, they were supposed to play earlier this year. They, they couldn't make the game. I know Goose Creek even offered its field for the game. Um, when it Hurricane Dorian came and, you know, Goose Creek said they were ready to play on that Monday. Somerville didn't want to play, which I don't know if I'll blame them, but if I'm Goose Creek, I'm thinking they were dodging me. They were ducking me. Like you see that in I, boxing all the time, one boxer do, uh, ducking another. <laughs> I, uh, I wouldn't think that was the case, but go on. Hey, the term ducking exists for a reason. Uh, but, no, as far as, far, as far as this game, this is kind of how I see it going. Um, I think Goose Creek is the better football team. However, I will say that Somerville is a – very proud program. They do have a very good football team. Um, they wouldn't be in the second round of playoffs if they weren't. So Goose Creek has to take care of the ball, uh, not help them with penalties. And I think another big key really for Goose Creek is, especially the defense, um, <laughs> they got to find Brody Hopkins and put him in a cage and don't let him out. You have to minimize the big plays that that young man will make. Last year he made two big long touchdown catches on him and uh, the Goose Creek D uh, offense turned it over four times, and Somerville won that game 34 nothing last year. Uh, don't want don't to leave this, these stats out. Um, defensively, obviously, the Gators are much improved than they were, you know, than they were last year. You know, kind of a credit goes to just really getting after it. They have over 100 tackles for loss this season. They've scored three defensive touchdowns. They've got a lot of guys making an impact. Right there in the middle, you've got Andrew Allen and Naheem Simmons. They're the two leading tacklers. They're the cornerstones. Um, and the secondary has got a bunch of guys, too, that can make plays. So, really, you know, just, Goose Creek just has, to be, just has to be Goose Creek, not let the moment be too big. Uh, you know, programs who – it's been a while since Goose Creek has been relevant, been on this stage. Sometimes they struggle when the lights get too bright. Um, I don't know if I, I mean, I really don't anticipate that Friday night. I think uh, Goose Creek's receivers uh, will have a field day. It's just, I, I just think that's a heck of a, mac up, a matchup in favor of the Gators. But, you know, you wonder a little bit when a team hasn't won in a while, how are they going to do in the second round of the playoffs? The lights are bright. I mean, it's Somerville who has great tradition. You know, that would concern me a little bit, but um, how I see it going, Goose Creek's going to win the football football game they're gonna win the turnover margin they're gonna keep Brody Hopkins in a cage and Goose Creek's gonna win the football game probably 35 to 21 the thing about about this particular matchup even back when Goose Creek was just the hands-down favorite to win the state title every year they had some really tight games with Somerville mm -hmm. Somerville I think they upset them once around that era, era and you know and the other games came out the Gators way but 
look for the Summer Rule Green Wave to show up and play this week. I mean, Hopkins, you say I got to box Hopkins up. Well, everybody knows that, but nobody's been able to do it yet. That's right. Uh, and, you know, and they've got enough players on defense. They've made a lot of interceptions this year. And I think they're just getting, as the season has gone along, they've got better pressure up front. But, you know, doing this probably some different things with their linebackers to help out. And I think that they're, they're poised to uh, upset a number one seed. I'm going to call Goose Creek the favorite because they got the number one seed, whereas Fort came into the playoffs. Number, I mean, Summerville. Right, Summerville right, came yeah. in the number two seed, so I'll give you that. I think it's going to be an interesting game. I, I'll, I'll, I'll take Summerville by three points. I think it's going to come down to a field goal. Wow. Well, you know, I tell you, listen, honestly, if it comes down, was it Braden Gregory? Braden Gregory's their kicker, yep. He's if, one of their kickers. I'll tell you, I, I will tell you this. If it comes down to him and he's got to make a kick, I trust that guy. That guy he? he's pretty, Braden Gregory is really good. He's, I mean, I, I don't have a whole lot of, I'm trying to think, in my coverage area, do I deal with any kickers I think are just great? I trust more than Braden Gregory. He's been pretty consistent. Oh, man, right now. Yeah, honestly, I, I, that's, that's actually a key to this game and also the next game we're going to talk about. Look, if you're a 5A kicker, I know it's cold. I know it's the playoffs, but if the snap is good and the hold is good, put the ball through the sticks on an extra point. That, that, that actually, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because that could be a key this Friday, a missed extra point or so a missed short field goal. you don't have a field goal kicker that's any good? What I'm trying to say is I have seen some kickers from some teams for some reason struggle to put the ball between the sticks from 20 to 25 yards, and that can't happen in 5A football. So, yeah, I don't know what Gregory's stats are, but I mean, I don't remember him blowing a game or anything like that. Nah, I think he's, he's been good. doing pretty well. No, I know he, he did no, last good. year. Every, I mean, every time I've seen the kid kick, he's he's uh, he's been money. So I don't know what his stats are, but if it, if it's if it's a tie game and Braden Gregory runs out there to kick it, just go ahead and go into the next round because <laughs> he's going to put it through the sticks. I'm I, you know I'm not a I'm not a Dorchester County guy. I'm not a Somerville guy, but I've seen that guy kick in uh, in a high school situation like that. I, I would trust him. All right, one more game. Um, Fort Dorchester uh, hosting Berkeley, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me tell you a little bit about what Fort did this week. Yeah. Uh, they ended up uh, winning 31-3 over Lexington, which was a strong number three seed. Uh, odd thing about that game, Somerville, it was a 6-0 lead at the end of the first quarter, which is not what those fans at, at Bagwell Stadium are used to. Uh, so everybody probably heard that score over the PA systems around stadiums, you know, around the state, and was like, whoa, what's going on with, with Fort Dorchester? But then, uh, you know, uh, they scored three touchdowns in the second quarter, back to the same old Fort, Fort squad. DeAndre Saab, uh, quarterback slash running back, had 120 rushing yards and a touchdown. Keith Desisher was big in the return game. Uh, Fort only passed, for, I think it was less than 30 yards in that game. A little bit odd, but, you know, I don't expect that trend to continue in the third round or second. Yeah, we're going into the they second have, round. They haven't made it through the second round yet. Yeah, Ron. yeah, yeah. We'll get to that. Second and third round. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, we mentioned uh, McElveen had a big defensive game. Uh, defensive end, Emmanuel Johnson. Linebackers, Maceo Montgomery and Jaden uh, Gardner both had uh, 12 tackles and at least one sack. Uh, you could go on and on. I think Brandon Johnson, the other Johnson, had like 10 tackles. Just a, you know, stellar defensive effort. Uh, they were really hoping to shut Lexington out, but then Lexington – you know, squeeze the field goal in there, which was almost blocked, I'm told. I, I wasn't there to see that, but I was told they almost blocked that and almost shut Lexington out. Um, that being said, uh, Berkeley uh, lost to them 44-0 earlier in the year, uh, but everybody knows it's not going to be the same feel at this game. Uh, Berkeley has had a full season to get players in maybe certain positions where they were younger. They, they probably matured. Um, yeah, I still like Fort in this game. Their defense is just too strong. I look for their offense to kind of start clicking again because it's going to be Berkeley. The last thing they want to do is be upset by a, a local low country team in the playoffs. Uh, so, you know, I really think Fort's going to have a strong game, but maybe not win by so such a one-sided margin. I'm thinking I'm going to take uh, Fort Dorchester by two touchdowns. What if I told you you were wrong? Okay, tell me why I'm wrong. I didn't, I didn't say you were wrong. I said, what, what if I told you you were wrong? Were you going to hit me or something? 
I might tell you you're it's right. It's always an option. <laughs> you are a Georgia fan. I'm a Clemson fan. I understand. I understand. Uh, I, you know what? I mean, I really agree with what you said there about it being a, a very close competitive game. I believe it's going to be a very close competitive game, and this is why. One, Berkeley's quarterback has got a lot more games under his belt. When they played, when they played the first time, they were a train wreck. The offense, offensive line didn't have a good game. That's, you know, that's a credit to Fort, North, Fort Northchester's front seven. But uh, at that time, they were having some quarterback, not problems, issues, uh, Willie Chisholm had just not played yet, so it was. His, I think that was his first game against Fort Dorchester. Seems right, yeah. But he's played about five or six games since then. He's kind of gotten it dialed in. And listen, don't 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 underestimate the power of revenge and motivation. There's just countless examples out there of where a team. Well, let's take Berkeley for example. Berkeley beat Somerville in the regular season last year. Yep. Lost to him in the playoffs. Um, I mean, there's there's uh, Al- Clemson beat Alabama in the 2016 national championship game. 2017, Alabama was angry and beat up the Tigers. Um, I'll, I'll even go back to the old school. Y'all, y'all don't know. Hey, listen, it's gonna be hard to believe, but I actually could play some basketball back in the day. One day, one day we played this team in the regular season. It was, I mean, it was like rec league, uh, and uh, they hammered us. They hammered us, and then we got we wanted to get them in the postseason, and we finally and we and we got them in the postseason tournament. And because they hammered us so bad um, in the regular season, we were ultra locked in. Like we were, you know, we were motivated by vengeance, but we also knew that we had to do all the little things right to win the football game, like our basketball game, take care of the ball, make good passes, you know, good shot selection, really play with some fire on defense. And I think that's kind of what Berkeley is going to have to do on Friday. They're going to have to do all the little things right. They're not going to be able to turn the ball over. For, for the love of God, they've got to make some extra points and field goals if it comes down to that. they got to stay away from penalties. And one other thing, they really have got to try to establish a run game, get something going against Fort, Nor- for, against Fort Norchester's front seven. And if you can do that in the first half and you can kind of keep them on the field, maybe you wear them down and you, you can catch up to them in the second half. But the problem is Berkeley, I mean, uh, Fort Dorchester just beats you over the head for about a half, and then in the second half, you don't have a whole lot left. They just the cumulative wear and tear of what their defense does to people, um, you know, it gets to them and it wears them out. I, I think that kind of happened, like you said uh, last week. Um, it, it's happened several times this year where one, their their defense just kind of gets you um, worn down and you don't have a shot. Um, so Berkeley does have to be able to try to run the ball a little bit. Don't help them. Make kicks, and if Randy Robinson. Can come up with some some little spice, some some something that Fort Dorchester's not looking for. Hit some home run balls over the top or something. Uh, they got to make every play, every moment count. They got to win every battle. Just like I was telling you in our little bas- basketball game when I was younger, we did everything right. We ended up winning that game easily. Um, you know, it was because we did all the little things right, and we, and we were angry as heck. Um, <laughs> so I. Th- uh, I, want to, I don't think I mentioned how Berkeley did all their damage last week. I want to mention those kids real quick. Uh, that They had a defensive touchdown by Jamar Smalls. Uh, Ty Haynes and Cortez Hayward uh, had rushing touchdowns. Solomon Butler and Willie Chisholm hooked up for two touchdowns. Look for that. Uh, and um, look for Chisholm and look for Butler on Friday. And also Hakeem Meggett. Um, uh, I, as far as picking a game, man. Put me on the spot here. You know, you, you know who the city slicker is the guy. That he's, he's a Berkeley fan that picks against the stag. He he, he loves the stag. Like remember y'all talking. He's about been to it. so many games in a row, and um, he emailed me because he was like, I guess he was like, man, what's up with football talk? Where's the picks? <laughs> so slick. Well, this one's not, for you. this one's not, for you, big guy. Never been just about the picks though. We're not one of those shows. Oh, you, there be lots of kids. There are lots of people who want you to pick against them. Um, and uh, here we go. I'm going to do it. It's going to be tough to do. I'm calling the upset. I'm taking the Stags to win uh, 28-27. Berkeley is going to beat Fort Dorchester and advance the next round and play Dutch Fork. So, um, Congratulations. You get Dutch Fork. I told you. Round. Yeah, I know, man. Isn't that it's terrible? Whoever, whoever wins. Hey, but hey, if you, you, know, you get to the game and you see what happens. Uh, real quick, we have waxed poetic today on all this high school stuff. College football, Clemson hosts Wake Forest. 
it's really not for anything other than for Clemson to win, uh, to stay alive in the in the chase to make the playoff. Clemson's already wrapped up the Atlantic Division. They hammered NC State 55 to 10. Uh, really was a cakewalk, pretty much what everybody expected. Uh, I don't see any problem with Wake Forest. Do you? Wake Wake Forest not a bad team, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't think I don't think Wake Forest has it in them this year. All right, Wake Forest, not, uh, uh, not with the way Clemson's been. Yeah, playing. Wake Forest, no problem for the Tigers in Death Valley. Uh, South Carolina coming off of man, a surprising loss to App State. I think App State beat them twenty to fifteen. Uh, they go to Texas A and M Saturday. Uh, really, they're four and six. They want to make a bowl game. They got to try to beat Texas A and M. Uh, any idea? Can you, you get any idea what's going on with the Gamecocks? Well, I will say this just to get a plug in for my alma mater. Uh, uh, Georgia Southern w did beat App State the week before, so I'm sure that App State was was pretty fired up from that loss. Yeah, wanted to you know they they wanting to prove that they can hang in there with the the big colleges. So uh, I'm sure that had a little bit of factor into it. Gamecocks, no, I don't know what's going on with them because they're just maybe the most unpredictable team in the country right now. I mean, they, yeah. they'll play so well. They played so well against Georgia. Very next game, they just can't they can't do anything right. So, yeah, I mean, they got some stuff to figure out in Carolina. Well, they're good on defense. Offensively, I don't know what's going on. But, I mean, I think they're, they're, they're generally pretty good on defense. Offense, sure. disjointed. I don't know what's going on. But – they need to get it turned around quickly or they're going to lose to Texas A&M for sure. And then the following week or two weeks after that, they got Clemson. Uh, one more game, uh, Charleston Southern, man. What about the what about the Buccaneers? You know, they uh, they played DeAndre Francois, who was the quarterback at Florida State. He goes to Hampton. Uh, he was the quarterback at Hampton, and uh, the Buccaneers took out Hampton. Uh, it was in overtime. A uh, local boy, a uh, local young man, played very well. Uh, Darius Douglas, he came in at quarterback for the Buccaneers. He ran for two touchdowns. He threw for one. And the Buccaneers improved to four and six on the year with the second straight win. They go to Clint, uh, Presbyterian College on Saturday at 1 p.m., and they're going to win for the third week in a row. <laughs> Presbyterians one and nine. They got no shot. So, um, Buccaneers on a roll under uh, Altry Denson. What do you think Douglas's role is moving forward? Do you think he's going to be, you know, seeing – that kind of playing time every week, or well, that's a that's a good that's a good question. I, I mean, honestly, I think he's earned some more playing time. He was a fantastic high school quarterback. Yeah. Tr you know, he did he he did what I would do if I was him. He tried to he dreamt big. He tried to go to the big school and see if he could work his way on at South Carolina. It didn't work out, so he came back to Charleston Southern. And um, you know, this is his first year, but I I think I think it's fair to say you can expect pretty good things from him moving forward because he was a fantastic high school quarterback, yeah, fantastic runner, fantastic passer. Um, I'm sure Randy Robinson would take him on Friday night if they could take him over I'm to the sure, Fort. I'm sure, he'd love to have him. I got gotcha. you. They uh, they're not going to need him because uh, Willie Chisholm is going to do the right. 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 All right. Well, so what, I mean, anything else you want to add before we? Uh, nah, go Bulldogs. Number four, number four team in the nation right now. Well, I got to hey, – no comment. Clemson's three, so can't say much about that. But Ohio State's two. So. Our, I got you. How are we doing? <laughs>